G here from Heritage Group. Uh, it's a beautiful Sunday today. Uh, we are with a very special guest, Radu. Hello. Uh, we're going to be doing another episode of our Meeting the Driver. Uh, we're going to talk about Radu's beautiful 911 he has here. Um, so, Radu, thank you so much for taking the time today to meet us. Uh, Thanks for having uh, me. No problem. It was a pleasure doing the drive up in the mountains. It was fun, wasn't it? Yeah, definitely. <laughs> Hearing that thing, the, the, the car go is, is something else. Well, thank you. Yeah, it's a, it, it's a fun car. Going from starting at Japanese cars, how did you evolve to German and ending up with this Porsche that you're driving? Well, I always liked... Th th this is an interesting story. I fell in love with that car, I think in... Um, I want to say 1982. Bruh. So in Romania, we had one magazine that's devoted to cars and it was pretty bad. But every year there was an almanac, okay. uh, I think it's called. It's like yeah. a book that has all the cars produced that year. Right. And uh, the pictures inside were pretty bad, but the covers were nice. Okay. So I think on uh, Almanac Auto in 1983, the back cover was a red 911 SE. <laughs> And I was like, oh my God, I'm gonna go to America and I'm gonna buy one of these. <laughs> of course, not knowing that they cost money, you have to work. Yeah, right, I, right. In my mind was like, everyone in America could buy whatever they want. <laughs> <laughs> and I remember it was Dakar and I think on the same cover, it was a, the red SC and I think it was a light metallic blue 328 or 308 Ferrari. Okay. And I was like, I was in love with both of them. But looking at the Ferrari, I'm like, I knew what I was in love with it mm. because it has that shape that's, uh, it's easy to love. It's right. like, come on, it's a wedge. Yeah. Every kid <laughs> likes that shape. It doesn't, you don't look at details, you just look at the shape. Right. And on the other hand, this thing was taller than it should be. The windshield was like this. It's got this bubbly eyes. And I'm like, it's had so much personality. Like those eyes were, it's like the car was talking to you. It's like, I don't know if it's angry or it's smiling. <laughs> uh, it's mostly smiling. So I think that's what attracted me to this car because it was just a little, it wasn't that easy to love right. as the Ferrari. It's easy to, for a kid to put a poster of a Lamborghini in the back and, <coughs> excuse me, non-COVID. A Lamborghini or like any, anything shaped like a wedge, like right. a Lotus, like even the kit cars of the 70s. Yeah. If you make it like a wedge, people yeah. are gonna like it. Gandini's designs, Zagato designs, sure, all, all sure. the old school wedges. And they yeah. were great, I'm not, but they're also easy to love. It's right, kind of right. cheap. So you saw the, the, your first Porsche on that Almanac cover, and uh, how did you come across finding this car? So fast forward many, many, many years. In uh, 2007, I got my first SE, mm -hmm. and it was just a glorious car. It was such a gorgeous car. Paint was perfect, interior was perfect, sport seats. It sat on the, I think, eights and eight and a half and nines in the rear. And it was just awesome. And that was my first Porsche. And I didn't have it for long. It got stolen after two years. So yeah, it was pretty devastating coming home and you know, you parked it there and you drive by your house and you're like, the car is not there and you're like, did I leave it at work? Because sometimes I park my cars at work, my okay. fun cars. Okay. I'm like, in the back of your head, you know for sure you didn't. But you still entertain that thought because it's easier for you yeah, to... Yeah, you don't want to uh, believe it. Yeah. So for a second, I'm like, I probably left it at work. I'm like, no, you're lying to yourself. It's not at work. So anyway, yeah, I got stolen. And um, it took me forever to find something like this. So I've been... Uh, I want to say it got stolen in 2009. Um, and at the time when I had that car, actually, I bought my second Porsche that was kind of a race car just for the track, nice. but it wasn't great for the road. I wanted a car for the road. So I spent from probably 2009 till 2013 when I got that. It was just looking and looking and eBay and everything else. And the great story about this car is I found it on eBay. My wife is from Virginia, right? Nice. And she kept bugging me for, I want to say about a year or so. I was like, hey, I want to go to Virginia. Why don't you come to Virginia? Let's go see where I grew up. And I'm like, eh, eh, why don't we go to Hawaii? Why don't we go to Maldives? <laughs> yeah, so we never had a good reason to go to Virginia. And uh, anyway, I find this car in Virginia. 
I'm thinking, hey, it's Virginia. Maybe I can sweet talk my wife into, hey, I want to go on a trip to Virginia. Sure enough, I win the car on eBay, like in the last minute, just <laughs> last minute bid, boom, on the car. This was Thursday night. And my wife was sleeping already. <laughs> it's like past midnight. And first thing when she wakes up, it's like, hey, baby, do you want to go to Virginia? <laughs> She's like, yeah, why? Uh, I bought a Porsche in Virginia. <laughs> But no, she, she loved the show, she was very understanding. She knew I was looking for one, so it wasn't that big of a deal. That's awesome. So the following, uh, this was Thursday night, Friday morning, I went to work. She booked tickets. She came to my work after hours and a buddy of mine came, took us to the airport. Flew to DC that night, overnight, did not sleep at all. Went to uh, my wife's sister's house, borrowed the truck and of course, I didn't realize we're in Virginia, this car is. It was one exit outside of Kentucky or something. It was like on the other side of Virginia. So we get into a car and we're like, oh, it's only 400 miles. I can cover that in like five hours. Right. Nope. Everyone in Virginia drives the speed limit. Really? Absolutely. And when a truck that does 55 passes another truck that does 56, <laughs> you're going to be there forever. He took us. I don't remember last time I was so tired of like, just buy a car, almost no sleep because of excitement. You go to work, get on a plane, right. fly overnight, uh, and then drive through Virginia. But anyway, the, the great thing about the car is the ad was only like three, three lines long. And okay. he basically said 88 Porsche 911 G50, obviously uh, engine rebuilt, three six cams and twin plug and roll cage. And I'm like, okay, that sounds interesting, but you know, when you have a car built like that, you expect at least 10 lines, right. nothing. When I called the guy after I won the bid, it was some interesting conversation. He had such a Southern accent that I could not understand the word he was saying. And he was an older gentleman. And I'm sure my accent to him was so right. weird. He couldn't understand the word I was saying. <laughs> So we got to the point where I'm like, hold the car. I get on a plane tonight, get to Virginia tomorrow. I'm like, okay, because we could not communicate at all. Oh, that's funny. Yeah, so anyway, back to, we drove to Virginia. We finally found the car, found him. His address is not even on the map. So anyway, we uh, get to, I think it was called something Glades, like, green glades or something in Virginia and his road was not on the map okay. his road did not exist <laughs> but eventually we managed to find it super nice gentleman uh, saw the car drove it loved it hotel room that night we had to sleep and the following day uh, I got a buddy of mine that does shipping mm -hmm. he went picked up the car and the car was in LA Monday nice. like two days later like literally <laughs> someone he sent someone to pick up the car and they drove non-stop wow. drivers taking turns yeah that by Monday when I showed up at work by lunch the car was in my office <laughs> and it was just that's awesome you need to yeah. give me the number of that shipping company yeah i know <laughs> <laughs> oh and the the previous owner was a big porsche fanatic too okay and he was uh, doing uh, driver's education and tracking and he was so good at keeping all the records mm. and keeping all the interior parts everything original to that car that when i bought the car he basically built the crate for the extra parts no like way. a four by six by eight foot long crate wow. with all the extra like three sets of rims all the brand new interior seats because they were taken out when the car was new <laughs> right right wow. uh, all the leather all the door panels the carpets the whole nine yards that's so nice of and him. oh my god yeah he sent everything back and here i am with the car and a huge crate of parts <laughs> and all the documentation for the car too i right. mean the the car was such a special car when you look at the, the way it was ordered. Mm -hmm. So I have the original sticker price and I believe back, this is 88. I think the turbos were in the, I don't know, 50, 60, 
Okay. And these cars were in the 39 to 50 something. This thing, the sticker price was 63,000, non-turbo. That's crazy. Yeah, and it's got the, all the bells and whistles. Yeah, and the, all the custom color paint to sample. Right, right. Uh, the leather was not even the regular lobster red or whatever they had at right. the time. It's like a different, wow. <laughs> but it's from the factory. Right. So it had all these goodies that obviously to me it didn't matter much. I just wanted a good car. Right. And at first I hated the color. Really? Yeah, I'm, I'm not a big Pearl guy. So okay. I'm like, all right, that's job done or one. The mini, cars come, the mini car is my possession. The first thing I got to do. Ah, it's such an eyesore. You got to do something about that. Right. So that happened over the years. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and um, anyway, the reason I bought the car is because we started doing this Targa rallies mm. in Northern California, but mostly in Mexico. So the Mexico ones are like this great three day event, 2000, well, maybe a, a thousand miles, 1200 miles, where you pretty much do anything that you want. Well, one leg of the strip is called La Rumarosa. It's a hill climb. It's 11 miles long hill climb with no, it's a two lane either direction. Uh, they're kind of separated. So it looks like a two lane road going up the mountain and you come down on the separate side of the mountain. Mm -hmm. But it's just such a glorious road. There's no uh, freeway entrances. Nice. So you, and in with our trips, we get like federally escorts. So you're pretty much not just allowed to do anything you want but kind of encouraged okay <laughs> so i got so addicted to like getting at the top of the hill as fast as possible <laughs> that i started building that car just for mexico that's great so that car is basically the last eight years or so of go back to mexico go to mexico break everything you can <laughs> nothing really broke like motor didn't break like we lost the muffler we we had little stuff right but nothing really broke. But you come back and you make it better for next year. Right. You make it better and you make it better. And I mean, there's so far you can go with the air-cooled motor, you know. I mean, I think that's pretty much maxed out for a 3.2 liter, normally aspirated, 242 horsepower at the wheel. That's a lot. Yeah. Uh, obviously, I'd like it to be 342, but it is what it is. So for, for the amount of power that it's got, we did a lot of aero work so okay. that kind of we got the top speed there's this portion this other portion of the road that's along the sea of cortez that's mm -hmm. kind of a straightaway okay and it's long enough to where you can build up speed and it's got a couple of like slide up and down so nice. you build up your speed to the top and then you floor it all the way to the mm -hmm. bottom and so we're trying to get a top speed of on it and a few i want to say in 2014 maybe we did 150, which was unheard wow. of. I'm like, oh my God, this is so <laughs> awesome. And then the following years, we got it as high as 170. Wow. And I mean, that thing at 170, it's like, yeah. it's like, hold on, like every single noise, like, oh my God, it's gonna explode. <laughs> but it, it's fun. And I comfortable with the fact that this is probably the end of it. You right, it, right. it can't push it any further. Uh, I mean, we've done every aero with the exception of the bottom, we have a, a flat bottom mm -hmm. that it doesn't go all the way. It only goes to front axle now. Okay. So probably for this year, I'm going to try to do it all the way and see if it does anything. I see. But um, yeah. I, cool. Well, good luck. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. <laughs> that sounds like a really fun time. It's, it's, it's a blast. Highly recommend it. Yeah.